What's going on, guys? Welcome back to another game analysis video. In this video, my team, Hartford Athletic, are taking on Pittsburgh Riverhounds. This is a very tough game for us because we are bottom of the table in the USL Championship, and Pittsburgh Riverhounds is top of the table. So it's literally the toughest opponent that we could face this year. Uh, here is the starting lineup for us. This is all correct, actually. That's pretty rare. I'm number 16, Matt Sheldon. I'm playing left back this game. And then here is the lineup for Pittsburgh Riverhounds. Uh, and this lineup is incorrect. Um, just a little, I think they go with a three back system here. Uh, and then Rovira and Blackstock are their two wing backs. But I mean, it's just kind of a technicality here. And a lot of times teams will give the wrong formation or wrong lineup um, just to make it a little bit more difficult for opposing teams to uh, defend them. Anyway, we're going to start off with kick. We are the green team. This is a big, big game for us. Like I said, it's also was on my birthday, August 23rd. So it was my 31st birthday here. And my parents were here. And as I'm sure you guys probably read from the title, I scored in this game. So pretty exciting. But it was a crazy, crazy game. I don't want to spoil too much. Um, but we'll just get started. Before we get into how I started this game, I want to talk about how I started my day. One of the first steps in my morning routine is to drink AG1, which is also the sponsor of today's video. AG1 is a foundational nutritional supplement that supports whole body health. Every single person out there is different, but all of our bodies rely on the same nutritional foundation to nourish the systems that power our health. Through a science-driven formulation of micronutrients, phytonutrients, and essential symbiotics, AG1 supports the brain, the gut, and the immune system. As a professional footballer, I perform the best on the field when my body is operating at its highest level. And I love AG1 because it makes nourishing my body with high quality ingredients so simple and easy. I've been using AG1 for the last couple of weeks and I love that feeling I get by starting my day off on the right foot. It makes me want to continue to make healthy habits and healthy choices for the rest of my day. My favorite benefits from drinking AG1 has to be the sustained focus and energy I get from the rhodiola, magnesium, and B vitamins, as well as the gut health support that I get from the probiotics, prebiotics, and plant-based enzymes. And I know I can trust AG1 because they use the highest quality ingredients with the strictest manufacturing regulations possible. They are NSF certified for sport, which is the gold standard for professional athletes like myself. That means that I know what's in the label is actually in the powder. There's no surprises. Like I said, AG1 is quick and simple. It just takes a few seconds. All you have to do is just add one scoop to some water, shake it up, and there you go. It tastes really good too. It's fresh and even a little bit sweet. It definitely doesn't taste like you're eating grass like with some other nutritional powders. I really enjoy it. So if you're interested in checking out AG1, then head to drinkag1.com slash become elite. By doing so, you'll receive a free one year supply of AG1's D3 plus K2 vitamin dropper, as well as five additional travel packs. Once again, a huge thank you to AG1 for sponsoring this video. We're gonna start with the kick here, and we're gonna play it out wide out to me. Now our game plan in this, this game as you're gonna see, is trying to bypass a lot of Pittsburgh Riverhounds pressure. They're flying numbers forward, especially as it gets to that fullback position. So when I receive the ball, my instructions and, and what I'm gonna to look to do a lot is try to bypass a lot of that pressure and play into Elvis for either to him to hold up the ball or for him in behind. So that's kind of how we're going to do that. And then defensively on the flip side, we're going to try to match their intensity and match their pressure. So as you can see here, applying a lot of pressure to their fullback Rovira, uh, making it very, very difficult and causing him to try to turn over the ball. Now that doesn't mean I'm going to kick the ball forward every single time. Like here, as I receive the ball, I'm going to play, I'm going to try to bring the ball down, playing to Tristan and uh, hopefully keep the ball. But with Pittsburgh's pressure, they foul a lot. So this game's going to be pretty ugly. It's going to be a couple long balls. It's going to be a lot of fouls. It's going to be a lot of uh, physicality, but that's how this game's going to go. We're going to try to match their intensity and their physicality. So we're receiving the ball looking forward, but Pittsburgh is so hard to break down defensively because they work hard and they're in their lines and they press and they work just really hard to get back. So as you'll see, and this is kind of the theme of this video, but they do a really, really good job to surround the ball and make it feel like uh, they have more players on the field than your teammates if that makes sense like they're outnumbering you on the field now with this pressure like i said we want to pressure the ball here i'm just here kind of on ibarra but as soon as this player takes that touch inside i'm just checking my surroundings checking to see where that fullback or that wing back is just to see if this ball is switched over here i can either pressure ibarra if it comes inside or i can run out wide to rovira and press here so i'm in a good half space ball goes all the way out to rovira i'm not going to foul here because this is going to be a stupid foul he's not going to be able to bring this ball down I just want to apply a lot of pressure. And then as he heads that ball in, now does a great job just to make it difficult here, wins that ball. And now we win the ball 
in their half and we can keep the ball there. So I think that's a like picture perfect pressing from us uh, doing a great job. Long switching ball over to my side, just do a good job to put my head on that, win that header out for a throw in and then pressuring Pittsburgh Riverhounds, their forward here. Even if we win the ball, try to play it forward to Elvis doesn't work out again. Like I said, working my ass off, pressing, doing a lot of work defensively, trying to make it difficult so they can't just keep the ball or easily break us. Now, even if they do, that's fine. It's gonna happen, we're gonna get back. I'm tracking back, I'm tracking back number 19 here, just getting back in my position and we win the ball. Now White, their goalkeeper, clears the ball out to my side. As you can see, since we've been pressing, we don't have much or many midfielders here to win the second ball. So here, instead of heading the ball back in, trying to find one of my center mids in that space, it's not on. I should head the ball out of bounds there. I tried to find Tristan. It didn't work. And at this point, as you can see, one stupid header like that, and they have an opportunity in our box. So I just need to be smarter there and tell myself if, if it's not on, just take the loss and head the ball out of bounds because you don't want to counterattack here. Corner kick for Pittsburgh, just pressuring Rovira, getting my foot on it a little bit, deflecting that, and then just tracking back all the way back, making it difficult. Again, this is a really bad spot to foul, so I'm just going to apply some pressure, stick a foot in, try to get a touch, and we do a good job to defend that. Now, counterattack from Pittsburgh Riverhounds attacking down their left side. Our problem, though, if we pause it right here, is that we have four guys surrounding the ball, which is good pressure on the ball, but we have Ibarra just wide open inside our 18, able to receive the ball, able to turn and shoot on goal. And now, I mean, it's never, never one person's fault or rarely, really, rarely one person's fault. Like even personally, this is my game analysis. What can I do? I mean, I think maybe if I would have stepped a little bit more and like, am I holding on Ibarra, even though he is unmarked in the box? And then do I ball watch? I'm, I think I'm ball watching there on Dequa when that ball goes and I kind of turn, hesitate for half a second. And that half a second that I hesitate, you know, if I didn't hesitate, could I have been able to, to get on the back post and stop that goal from happening? Elvis does a great job here to win the ball before it goes out for a uh, goal kick, plays it right to me. And then as I get pressured here, I'm just sticking my body in between the ball and Rovira, the, the defender and winning a foul there as he lunges in for the ball. Receiving the ball here, looking forward. I don't think it's on to try to find one of my midfielders, but tons of time and space back here for now Log. So I'm gonna play it back to my center back and then just get forward. Throw in for us on this side. As you can see how they kind of swarm over in these spaces. So when they do this, the best thing you can do is circulate the ball and play it all the way over the opposite side as fast as you can. So I'm going to play it back to Nile and now it's going to wind up to hit it all the way over to a guard Rito on the opposite side. Um, great attack from Pittsburgh coming in and now they have four guys in the box to our three defenders. And now I think I make the right decision and leave Rovira on this back post to come into Dequa to try to mark this. But still, I mean, this is a, not a good picture of three Pittsburgh guys inside our site, six or around our six. Now, again, personally, I mean, you could say, oh, yeah, it's unlucky to get off the post and bounce right back to him. But like I need to be stronger and I need to be better marking Dequa for that header. I mean, it's always easier to say that you could be better and do something better. But I do think if I would have just bumped him more, jumped into him more and try to be a little bit more aggressive on this header, I think it would have been just try to make it a little bit more difficult. It's just frustrating because it's, you know, in the game, you feel like you're doing everything you can. But when you watch it back, you're like, could I have done more? Could I have jumped a little bit higher, pushed a little bit more? Now here, I think that was a, I don't think that was a foul on Hogan. I was making fun of Pat after the game saying that he was soft for that. But the referee and I think the Pittsburgh bench thought I kind of jumped into him. I thought I kind of went a little bit more straight up, but of course I'm going to say that. I'm going to be a little bit more biased for myself, obviously. But I was getting a little frustrated that we're down 2-0 to start this this uh, second half. So I did try to go into that header a little bit more aggressively for sure. Now just tracking back here, uh, Tristan Hodge does a great job to poke that ball out from, uh, from Dequa. And uh, we maintain possession now. Again, we have the ball looking forward. There's not many options in the center. My center mids are here and here. I think it's just not a right time to play into them right now. Looking forward though, again, I'm just not seeing much. I wish the camera was a little bit more zoomed out so we could see what I was looking 
app, I just play it back into Nile, and then we just keep the ball a little bit here. Now, this is a great spot to receive the ball. I'm looking forward. Elvis, my center forward, is right here checking for the ball. I'm going to play it right into his feet and then continue my run forward for a little one-two. Um, I think it's well marked. I think he makes the right decision to turn out wide and play it into Rito. And now we can attack down that right side and try to find something there. Receiving this ball now, and again, like I said, Tristan, I mean, could he, is he on? Maybe. Could I take another touch and maybe play over to Connor McGlynn? I think that's on as well. But again, the thing was bypassing their pressure and trying to find Elvis to his feet for him to hold up the ball. And it's working. And again, here again, Rovira is already running out to me. You can see I'm receiving the ball deep. I'm checking my shoulder. I'm making eye contact with Elvis. I see that he is in the pocket of space. So as I'm going to receive this ball, I already know I'm going to take a touch inside. I don't even have to look. I can just play the ball right up into Elvis and he can again hold that ball for us and we can break that pressure now and play and then it felt like whenever we did break the pressure pittsburgh was going to foul us then so it was a difficult it's difficult to play against try to go up for that header losing that duel but beverly does a really good job just to earn that foul again like i said they're a physical team pittsburgh receiving that ball now we have some time and space i'm just going to play it one touch into luke and then we can kind of circulate the ball again this is kind of the theme as well as the first half i think we had more possession but they had more opportunities on goal firm ball in from nile i'm going to take this touch inside as i take this touch i have a ton of pressure from rovira so what i'm going to do is just like i said before putting my body in between rovira and the ball so the only way for him to get the ball is for him to go through me and that's a foul so when you have a, a lot of pressure like that, a high pressing, pressing team or high pressing player, just shielding the ball like that and making them foul you is one of the best things you can do as well, as well as playing quickly. Now look what I'm looking at, like four yellow jerseys kind of trapped over in the sideline. Here I actually try to go for a meg on Rovira, try to meg him right here. It doesn't work out, but I get lucky with the bounce. Bounces right back to my foot. I'm able to play into Tristan and then we can keep the ball. And that's a good break of their pressure. Once again, I feel like I'm a broken record in this game, but looking forward, I'm looking at Elvis. I'm making eye contact with Elvis so I can take that touch, make one more glance just to see where he's at. And then again, just pinging this ball up to him, just really trying to find him. I think that's a great ball. It's driven and uh, it lands right at his chest. So now we can break and, and attack forward and beat their pressure. Once again, uh, same exact picture, a lot of pressure coming in from the sideline and I need to break it. My problem here is I try to clip the ball, try to curl the ball into Andre Lewis, one of my center mids, and I should have just kept on doing what was working, playing to Elvis, you know, ping the ball, lace the ball into Elvis instead of trying to curl it, chip it into one of my center mids because I do that, and it's almost a, a counterattack for Pittsburgh. Um, so I just got to keep on doing what's working. Lofted ball over to my side, just doing a good job to jump that, win this header, and instead of just heading this, you know, up or somewhere, I'm going to try to head it right into Prince so we can keep the ball here in their half. And this is a good uh, good attack from us here. Now, now with the ball, driving forward, I'm just outside on the line, receiving the ball. Uh, I think ideally we'd have somebody right in this pocket of space, or I could take a touch and drive in this pocket of space. I end up taking a touch down the line, and just with the outside of my right foot, kind of curling the ball down the line for Prince. And then Prince has a great attack, step over, drives down, great cross in, and almost finds Elvis inside the box. So that's a great play. Uh, and then last play of the first half, Prince clips the ball in. I'm just near post right there. It's a little bit over my head. And then that is the end of the first half. So thoughts on the first half, uh, definitely frustration a lot. Uh, I think I did a good job personally finding, kind of breaking that pressure, finding Elvis a few times, um, keeping the ball when I had to keep the ball. But defensively, I was pretty frustrated with myself, like either missing the header or maybe ball watching on that first play where I could have just reacted faster to that back post. And then as a team, I thought that, when we did break the pressure and attacked, I think we created some good opportunities. And we look, you can see we have a little bit of possession more than um, Pittsburgh, but I think still defensively as a team, uh, we got broken down a few times and that led to some goals. So both, I, I feel like the individual story and the team story was pretty similar here. Just frustration defensively getting broken down, but possession wise, creating wise, it was okay, could be better. So game plan for the second half now, it was very similar to the first half, continuing to break their lines of pressure, continue to play forward, and just trying to tighten up defensively. So here's the start of the second half now, Pittsburgh with the ball. They just try to keep the ball here. Here's my very first touch in the second half, receiving the ball back from Prince, just putting my foot on top of it, looking forward, and then circulating the ball, playing back to Nile uh, so we can kind of swing the ball around. 
just cutting out that pass, bringing that ball down. And as I try to settle this ball now, I'm getting pressure both from my left shoulder and in front of me. So I'm gonna kind of turn my body, shield the ball, bring it down, be a little bit patient, and then find that pass back into uh, to now there. Now now plays right into Tristan. Tristan brings the ball down, plays it right back out to me. And then like I said, just touching the ball here and then bypassing five of Pittsburgh's front attackers by playing direct on the ground or a little bit above the ground into Elvis. And by playing direct now, bypassing their pressure, we can break it forward. Now we have the ball and they're attacking half. Pittsburgh is forced to drop back into their lines. And now we can keep the ball here and keep possession here in their attacking half. Now look at Pittsburgh's shape. They're all over in that side of the field. So the best thing you can do here, play into the center mid and switch it over to the opposite side. Get them moving side to side, running around, tiring out. That's really how you break that high pressing team. Break the pressure, settle the ball down, and then go side to side to side until it opens up. Now me, I was pressuring out Rivera here, uh, goes right into Ibarra who plays it out wide. I'm tracking back and then getting, trying to make my body big to block the cross. And then Rovira plays across right back into Ibarra and Ibarra heads it onto goal. So um, again, personally, what can I do better uh, when a goal happens here? I think after I put the initial pressure on Rovira and he kind of makes that run down the line, can I turn and either bump him or can I run faster and track back faster? Uh, to try to block that cross. Now still, you know, it's a, a, a cross in from this side, header in the box, and just we got to tighten up defensively as a team. It's, you know, it's been kind of the story of our season. We've been leaking goals, and it's just, uh, it's been frustrating. Winning that header from the, uh, the punt of White, the goalkeeper, receiving this ball now from Tristan. JP is checking. He's in a really good pocket of space. I think this is the right time to play right into JP. He's going to play it right back out to me. It's getting really tight now. We have three Pittsburgh Riverhounds guys just kind of crashing in on me. So I'm going to clip the ball up, kind of chip it over, and play it back into Tristan so we can swing the ball around to the opposite side now. Tristan does exactly that, plays into Connor, and then Connor opens up and plays it out wide. Tristan receives the ball. As he opens up here, I know he needs to have an outlet, so I'm just kind of sprinting wide now opening up, trying to receive this ball from Tristan. Now, as I look up, Prince is making a run in behind. I try to play Prince in behind over Pat Hogan, uh, but I just under hit that. I think that's a great run for Prince. I think that's on to try to counter attack there. I just under hit that. If I would have hit that 10% harder, I think that would have been a great, great ball and a great counter attacking opportunity. And then just tracking back defensively, trying to uh, make my body big and block the cross there for uh, their corner kick. Receiving the ball, playing it back into Tristan. Can we circulate it now over the opposite side? Tristan with the ball, my center back plays it out to me, looking forward. And now here, like I said, I mean, I'm trying to find one of my center mids and I just think Pittsburgh does such a good job of closing lanes and blocking lanes that it just makes it difficult. I felt like the only option I had was either to play it long and up the field or to play it right back into my center back. So if I sound like a broken record, I mean, that's just what I saw. And again, like look for it, like look how well Pittsburgh does. It just makes it seem like they have twice the amount of players on the field than you because they're so good at pushing the numbers over there, making it difficult. And then yet if they get broken, they track all the way back and, uh, and, and get compact in their lines. Now ball comes into me. I should play Andre Lewis right here into space. I try to flick the ball in behind Elvis. I don't think that's the right decision at all. Elvis was not on the same page as me, and he shouldn't be. I think I should just play simple there, play into Andre Lewis's feet, and then spin off for a, uh, a one-two. Winning the header there, and then just getting helped up. And then uh, we just don't get the second ball. Ball comes in behind to me now here. As you can see, I get switched over to the right back position. We made some substitutions. So here, I don't think it's on to head it all the way back to my goalkeeper. I don't think it's on to head back in denial. So I'm just popping the ball up as much as I can with that header and trying to let time for my uh, center mids to, uh, to come back and receive that. Jumping up for the header there, it comes off of number 13 there. And now it's out for our throw-in. I'm going to play right into Andre. Andre plays it right back to me. Tons of pressure from Robbie Mertz. So now I'm just going to open up my body with the inside of my foot. Just pop the ball forward, trying to find Elvis or one of my strikers. Comes right back to Robbie, uh, putting some pressure on him. And then we end up getting a throw-in out there. 
Now, Cave plays it out to me. I'm checking my shoulder, looking down the field, and I'm trying to see where their winger is pressing me from or their, their wing back. He's pressing me right down the line, so I know I have space in the middle. I know I need to take my touch and drive into this space to break that immediate pressure. As soon as I break forward, I'm looking to my center mids. I don't think it's on to play JP or Andre here, but as I'm looking in, inwards to my center mids, it closes up, and I miss this pass right into Antoine. I think he's in a really good pocket of space and you can see what he was looking for he was already looking out wide to Danny he wanted the ball into his feet so he could then play one or two touches out wide to Danny and break that I just missed that and uh, I was looking into my center mids there Danny plays a great ball into Antoine as both of these guys run out to pressure Antoine there's gonna be a huge pocket of space right in this near post area so I'm gonna run right into this Antoine plays a great ball right in my chest and then my thought process is just bring the ball down with the chest and volley it with the right foot so I'm gonna to try to do exactly that volley this right into the near post try to sneak it past white but it just doesn't work he makes a really good save but I think that that whole thought process is right I think it's the right decision to try to chest this first and then try to just go sneak it near post I think the far post I don't know I think it might have been on but that's just what I felt in that moment. Pressuring uh, here, Conardo Forbes. I make a stupid foul. I was just getting frustrated again. We're down 3-0. And I was getting very frustrated and, and kind of losing my head a little bit there. This is a really dumb foul. Like, there's no reason for me to step in here. Uh, Forbes is about to lose the ball. Andre Lewis was just about ready to uh, drive and, and go for a counterattack. And then I step in with my right leg, foul Conardo Forbes. And... Uh, yeah, I give up a, uh, a dumb foul on the top of our 18-yard box. Now, I'm sure you've heard this before from a coach or somebody, but when you go up for a header, one thing you can do is make in, like you can initiate the contact first by bumping the, the forward and then take a step back and win the header. And that's exactly what I did here. By bumping him and knocking that forward off balance first, they can't jump. And it's really hard for them to, after they're bumped, regain their balance and then jump back up. Uh, you have to do like the perfect amount of pressure so it's not an obvious foul, but it's also enough to really knock them and have and make them have to take a step forward. Uh, receiving the ball now, looking forward. Again, as I look forward, I just keep on seeing yellow shirt, yellow shirt, yellow shirt. So again, I felt like my options were either to play it back or to play it just a long ball in behind. Now this is some great movement. Danny Barrera, my center mid, comes out wide to my position. I come inside to his position. I receive that ball. Uh, it's a great ball from Danny right into me. I received that ball down, and then I was looking to play Antoine out wide. Looking back at it, I think a one-touch ball there to Antoine was probably on. But uh, with the amount of spin that was coming in with, I wanted to settle it, take a touch, and then try to play it. So I think the thought process was, was pretty good there. Now, corner kick from us. Ball comes into JP. JP plays it right into Andre, and then Andre's going to play it back to JP here. As you can see, I am right here. Nobody's really picking me up. I'm in a really good area, uh, kind of near post, and I'm checking my shoulders just to see what's my around my surroundings. And then JP plays a great ball in right to my head, and as I go up for this header, I hear the goalkeeper, White, yell out keeper. So that means in my head that he's coming off his line and that all I need to do is just get a little glancing touch on this, just to flick it on with my head, and most likely it's going to bounce over this keeper that's coming off of his line and fall into the back of the net. So that's exactly what happened. It worked out exactly how I thought it was going to happen and I'm pretty stoked about that because you know I don't get many many goals so what's also funny here as you can see I start to celebrate I start to go but then I realize that we're down 3-0 or 3-1 at this point and so I had to immediately go crap get the ball we have to hustle back because we need to score two mo more uh, goals here so anyway uh, here's the start after our first goal now receiving the ball I'm looking forward Antoine's making a run down the line I don't think it was on, so I'm going to put my foot on top of the ball, pull it back. I'm looking inside to JP now. That's not on, so now I'm going to play it all the way back to my center back. And that's kind of how my thought process kind of goes when I receive the ball. Immediately, if I can, I want to play my striker or my winger. And then if that's not on, okay, I'll play one of my center mids. If that's not on, okay, I'll play it back to my center back. If that's not on, do I just need to clear the ball or play it back to my goalkeeper? That's kind of like how the order should go in my head. Receiving the ball once again now. This time I do think it's on. I've already checked my shoulder a few times now. Keep on looking down the field. I tried to play into Elvis, and then when and maybe you know with the idea of Elvis flicking it on to uh, Antoine. Now just looking down, I'm looking into Antoine, my my winger here. I'm going to receive the ball. As soon as I receive that ball, I already know that he's going to make that inside to outside run. He talks to me about it all the time. He loves this run. I actually have to play this ball a little bit wider 
and open my body a little bit more because of the pressure of the defender. But Antoine still gets there. He's going to say it's because he's really fast. He does a really good job to get around that defender, plays it right into Danny Barrera. And then Danny, if he's on top of the box with the ball on his left foot, more often than not, he's going to put that ball in the back of the net. So great goal from Danny, great run from Antoine, great ball from Antoine. And now we're, it's uh, two to three. So we're starting to turn around and all we need is one more goal to tie this up. So really, really good work from, uh, from everyone here. It's just frustrating because I think like in this 20 minutes, we played so well. And if we just played 90 minutes like that, it would be amazing. Receiving the ball. And then, like I said, it felt like, you know, centrally and playing towards the center of the field, it was just all yellow shirts. And like I said, either I could play it backwards or skip lines and play it forwards. Uh, Kemba Cabato with the ball, clipping ball into the box. Elvis goes up for the header against White, the goalkeeper. Then Antoine gets the second ball against Pat Hogan. He tries to play it back to Danny Barrera. It doesn't work out, bounce, it bounces right back to him. And then he sneaks the ball in to the near post with a, a great shot. Now, you know, I'm going to be biased here. Is there a foul in the box? I'm going to, uh, I'm going to, uh, was it plead the fifth? I'm going to plead the fifth here. I'm not going to say anything. You guys can make the call for yourself. But regardless, Antoine scores the goal here. There's no foul called and we tie it up 3-3. So amazing, amazing comeback from us. But unfortunately, here, 88th minute now, right into Obregon, and Obregon with a, a goal of the week contender. Receives the ball on his chest. I think Kaveh's right on his back, making it difficult, but he turns him onto his right foot and just blasts it near post, right in the roof of the netting. I mean, this is a great goal from Obregon. Obregon is low center of gravity, blast it there's no way that a goalkeeper can save that ball it's a great goal but it's just it just sucks it felt it feels like every single game we play we play so well or we, I, I shouldn't say that we play well in spurts we leak some goals but i think we create a lot and i think we're in games but we just keep on giving these last minute goals and it's uh it's been a fr it's been a frustrating season there's no way around it it's been very very frustrating uh and you just keep on asking questions and you start second guessing yourself a lot uh, anyway, I received the ball in from Cave in this pocket of space. Danny's right here and play it one touch out to Danny. And then I just get studded. I just get cleats down the back of my Achilles right there. I think it was from, I don't know who that was, but it was accidental, I think, but just it hurt. Now, long ball from Cave comes into me. I see a 2v2 right here in the center of the uh, the 18 or the top of the 18 yard box. So I think this is, I'm just going to put the ball into this area. Uh, doesn't work out, but the second ball does. Comes into JP. He plays it right into Elvis. And now we have this is a dangerous opportunity for us right around the uh, top of the 18 yard box. Falls in for Andre Lewis. He plays it out wide to Prince. And then Prince just mishits it and out for a goal kick. So that was pretty much our last chance of the game, unfortunately. I mean, the rest of this is kind of just us defending and then them kind of time wasting in the corner. 97th minute now. And uh, the game is called right here as they play it in. So that's the game, unfortunately. Or sorry, now the game is called there. That's the game, unfortunately. So we lose four to three. I thought in the 20, 25 minutes of that second half where we were turning things around, attacking, putting chances on goal, uh, scoring three goals. I mean, if we play like that for 90 minutes every single game, I mean, we've sh shown like putting three goals away on the best defensive team or one of the best defensive teams in the league, top of the table team, we have the capability to be a much better team and much better position where we are on the table. But it's just that those moments where we leak goals defensively and aren't solid defensively that are, that are really killing us. But I hope you guys enjoyed this video. You know, I hope you guys enjoyed seeing me score. It doesn't happen very often, but happy to get that. And uh, if you enjoyed this video, if you learned something, please hit the thumbs up button, subscribe. I'll see you guys in the next video. All right, guys, peace.